I'm Melissa Millett, a professional dog trainer. I work with seven dogs and one cat to put on stunt dog shows across the country. All my animals are unique. Each one has an amazing backstory. And today, you'll hear one of them. This is Doggy Diaries. Little Popcorn was only two pounds when she first came home. I could see her intensity, drive, athleticism, and I knew right then and there we had a star on our hands. She was born on a farm where she could run free all day, and by the time she was eight weeks old, she was already solid muscle. When she got to my house, she used her strength to scale my furniture. Popcorn was also a very nervous pup. She would bark if a leaf blew out of a tree five blocks away. Weighing only two pounds, socialization was difficult. She seemed to love the sound of her own voice and was becoming one of those yappy little dogs, so she earned herself the nickname Yippy Skippy. Peppers! When I picked up this little two pound puppy that was scared of the world, I had one goal in mind. Allow her to feel safe with me and develop a strong bond. Having just lost a dog six weeks earlier, I did develop a strong relationship with this little dog and we were rarely separated, earning her yet another nickname, Velcro. At first, the separation anxiety was extreme. There were volunteers whose jobs were to cuddle her during showtime so she wasn't panicking in her crate. Showers were taken with the curtains open so she could see me and she was left with sitters while I was gone. She wanted no one but me. Once the foundation of confidence building was laid, then the work for her to be left alone became easier and the separation anxiety was the first to go. I am not one that believes dogs shouldn't be treated and carried like babies as long as you do the work to teach them to be comfortable on the ground. I toted popcorn around in my arms, but I also taught her to be confident in the world and independent of me. And so we developed an incredibly strong bond and she slowly found confidence in a scary world. Fast forward to almost two years later and we have a dog who is now comfortable with people being handled at the vet and sleeping happily when left alone. We are still working on comfort levels with other dogs and impulse control, but are making great strides. She has been described as a completely different dog. Starting off life as a small breed, hyper spaz, non-stop, yappy little dog, you would think that she would be hard to like, and that may have been true for some, but for me, she is a dream dog. She had me wrapped around her little paw right away. You could see a line of cartoon hearts coming out of my eyes at her. It was like I knew she needed me, and there was no one else in the world that could save her. She rewarded me with an unbelievable talent that I have never before seen in a dog, and she is so stinking cute. This dog is 150% an athlete. Jump rope. Jump, 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 jump. through my arms. Jump, go around. Go, 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 go. Weave through legs. Yes, yes. Sit pretty, balancing on my feet. Rebounds. Ready, go. Playing basketball. She masters tricks in a very few sessions and never tires of working with a smile on her face that matches my own. Uh, she's integrated the show in a different way. My other dogs are Boston Terriers. I've always worked with and enjoyed them. Uh, La Sophia is a lab, she's very calm. And Popcorn is the thin-framed, long-legged dog that is an athlete, and her tricks reflect that. And then I have some big plans for her. I want her to handstand in the palm of my hand. I want her to do a walking handstand. And I feel like the sky is the limit with this dog to do different tricks than I've ever had. In teaching this little dog her tricks, we like to look at their temperament and personality. Things that she excels at is jumping and athletics. Things that she does not excel at is staying still. 
So I like to teach with a, a game called Free Shaping where she guesses what I like to do. I'm gonna work on having her offer me a handstand without any lures and then I go back to the lure to get duration on the handstand. But this is one of the steps. Now you can see her desire to work and guess. The guessing is part of the learning. So first we're gonna free shape her to handstand against this pylon. Okay, we're gonna let her go on the pylon and start guessing what it is that I'd like from her. And this will also showcase this style of learning where you can see that the dog is an active participant guessing. Okay, there we go. We'll move it back, give her some space. Yes. There is an old circus style trick where a small terrier like this one will handstand in the palm of their trainer's hand. This is a pretty incredible trick that I'm gonna attempt with this little sweetheart. Attempt and succeed eventually. But right now I'm working on increasing the duration of the handstand. It, obviously it takes a very long time for the dog to develop the skills to hold a handstand, for even a human to develop those skills. What we're working on right now is for her to come up into a handstand and hold it on her own. And then I also increase duration by um, helping her along. So there's two ways that I'm teaching this handstand. Um, I'm also starting on a little platform and I'm using a pylon to give her something to handstand near and target. Okay, so we're gonna get her started with her little handstand. Okay, ready? Handstand. Back up, handstand. Yes, good. All right, we have another variation on the handstand. In this variation, I want to um, hold her and actually push her up because the, the end game is for her to be two front paws in my hand, lift her up and remove my hand. So I'm doing a variation of that. So I'm gonna get her to handstand. Oops, break, good. Okay, so I want her to hold it a little longer. She can hold it for a little longer. So we're gonna try that one again. Ready? Stay, break. Awesome! And then when she does a really good one, then we give her a couple. Good job! Very nice! So I always want there to be a start and a finish. Um, handstand, break. And I want her to hold it till my hand comes back. So a good one, come on. Break! Good job! That was great! All right, we'll try one more. Excellent, get another treat ready. Good, okay, ready? Break, good job, awesome! All right, now that was an excellent job. We practiced that a uh, couple times a day, few reps in a row to develop the muscle and coordination, much like a human gymnast would. Um, just lots of repetition on that one. It's not only learning what that I would like her to do, something so complex, but developing the, the, the muscles and coordination in order to do it. So I, I see big things for this little dog. I think she's gonna get that one, okay? The sky is the limit. I can't wait to see where this dog goes. She's not even two years old and she's already got all these incredible tricks. This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. If hot rods, street rods, choppers, and customs are your thing, then visit our showroom and website for a complete list of suppliers for all your parts and accessories. In Dogs We Trust offers puppy, basic, intermediate, and advanced group classes in a climate-controlled location right in the heart of the city. Private lessons for specific issues are also available. Six dogs per class, internationally recognized trainer, thousands of dogs trained. Learner's Business Law Lawyers offer a depth of expertise few other firms can match. As one of Southwestern Ontario's largest law firms, we've handled some of the region's biggest and most complex business transactions. Our expertise is proven. Visit learners.ca. 16 years I kept this secret from my wife, my brother, my sons. 
I was able to do that and maintain any degree of sanity. That worries me when I think about it. Mom, do you understand what he's done? I just want to know what's going on. Going on. How do you know conscience? Rogers TV, London. I never pictured myself as a cat person, but I definitely am one now. Oh, I love how you love using those claws on me. After a life spent with dogs, I finally took the plunge and adopted Sashimi privately when she was 10 months old. She has been raised with dogs and believes she is one. She enjoys walking on a leash and keeping pace with the dogs. She tolerates other dogs, but prefers the company of her dogs when she's out and thinks of them as her own personal bouncers. The cat is a crowd pleaser, hands down. It blows people's minds. It blows people's minds that the cat is even there and comfortable. And usually we tie her up in the ring because she gets to do whatever she wants. She's a princess. She doesn't have to sit in a crate. She doesn't like it in a crate. And they can't believe it when they see her sunbathing on top of the props and just overall enjoying herself. Sashimi is a Bengal cat, a breed that was originally mixed with a small Asian leopard and still looks like they belong in the jungle. Besides having a beautiful pattern, the coat of a Bengal cat is also incredibly soft. They are quite mischievous and very much a handful. Don't expect a quiet cat that sleeps all day. Referred to as the border collie of cats, these felines are highly intelligent and active. If you do not give your Bengal an appropriate outlet for their intelligence, they will find one. These qualities make the Bengal cat a perfect breed for learning tricks. Sashimi was a confident cat from the get-go, but, <laughs> but it was a task getting her to work and concentrate. It was especially challenging in public and in particular, a busy fair or festival environment. So I started her out at smaller indoor events and then worked up to progressively louder and more exciting venues. If the cat becomes stressed at an event, they will think shows are scary. The trick was to bring her only to the events that I knew she would enjoy. That meant asking a lot of questions about the setup and really knowing what your animal needs to feel comfortable. Cats are extremely finicky animals and incredibly difficult to train. They become stressed much easier than dogs and when an animal has an adrenaline spike from fear, they become more sensitive to subtle stressors for the next few hours. You risk developing a negative association with traveling, for shows, and you can forget about performing. The trick is, the cat has to enjoy the adventure, including the work. It is apparent that Sashimi is an extremely special cat with a higher confidence level and desire for adventures. Nicknamed by a friend, the prankster, she loves outsmarting and teasing the dogs. Now Sashimi's interaction with the dogs is quite hilarious. It is apparent that she has a higher intelligence level. She's nicknamed the prankster. She likes to hang back and watch them play. And when there's a, a lull, she rips through the center of them and jumps at a height where they can't catch her and then looks at them like, you idiots. It's, uh, it's quite hilarious. I find cats more intelligent than dogs and she can even outsmart me sometimes. They absolutely love learning, but they move like molasses in January. Sashimi won't do as many reps, will spontaneously forget things, and she needs to know what's in it for her. Okay, so we're gonna showcase some of Sashimi's incredible tricks. Um, I just wanna take a second and discuss how we teach a cat. We teach a cat with free shaping which means that the cat guesses. I want the cat to think that she's got the human trained because cats are very different. They don't like being told what to do. They like doing it on their own accord, which is why the cat is not in front of me right now. I don't teach the cats to stay off the equipment. That's a higher level and it's something that we would do with dogs. But with the cats, I just present the equipment and the cat 
performs the action. So we're gonna bring the cat in and we're gonna work on her incredible balance. She's going to come running straight for the equipment. Sashimi! Okay, ready? This cat loves to work. Oh, she's coming for you first. Sashimi! All right, so I'm gonna start her on her marker. I have to get my treats ready because cats are very what's in it for me. Yeah, sit. Okay, we're gonna work with her incredible balance. She is super excited right now. She is um, too excited to be able to think and perform her task. She uh, needs a second to calm down and she's purring and she's going crazy. Are you ready, sweetheart? Okay, go. Slow down. Good, pretty, all the way. One, two, one, two, three, and a high five. Thank you. Very nice, and one more. Pretty. And a high five. Yes. <laughs> Next, we're going to showcase one of my favorites. This is called Sit Pretty in a Foot Stall, and it also um, works with the cat's balance and coordination. This is not a trick that you'd want to get stiffed on in a show full of people. It's a very awkward position to come back from if the cat didn't perform, but fortunately, most of the time, this cat is rock solid. Okay, pretty. Whoops, lost a shoe. <laughs> okay, ready, hop up. Yeah. Go. Pretty, pretty. What? Nope, that's cheating. <laughs> One. One, two, three. Pretty. One, two, three. All right, that's all we're getting out of you this one. Okay, go. Yeah! I've always felt nervous about promising a cat and not being able to deliver because you never know when a cat's going to uh, throw in the towel. But this cat has shown me that she does consistently enjoy herself and enjoy performing. So I think I'm ready to start saying, hey, there's a cat coming. Last but not least, it is her absolute favorite trick. She loves to ride her scooter. And she gets this business face with her ears drawn back and leans into it, and it is the funniest thing. And then it's hard to get her off the scooter, and she runs right back to it. So the second, oh, she's doing it right now. <laughs> the second I look at her, it's game time. All right, ready, Sashimi? And she knows it, there she goes. <laughs> Then when we get to the bottom, it's tricky getting the scooter back. Can I have that please? Can I have it? Can I have that please? May I have the scooter? <laughs> can you get off please? Can you get off? Off the scooter please. Off? Okay, can you get off the scooter? Come on, off the scooter please. Off the scooter. She is a beloved and treasured pet who lucked out with a home that provides the mental stimulation and activity for the highly intelligent girl that she is. She has changed the dynamic of the show and is a welcome addition to the family. Having a cat has been a big learning curve for me, but I am enjoying it and all the rewards that come with it. <laughs> This program is brought to you by the following sponsors. In Dogs We Trust offers puppy, basic, intermediate, and advanced group classes in a climate-controlled location right in the heart of the city. Private lessons for specific issues are also available. Six dogs per class, internationally recognized trainer, thousands of dogs trained. If hot rods, street rods, choppers, and customs are your thing, then visit our showroom and website for a complete list of suppliers for all your parts and accessories. Jess Brady. Join me as I sit down with some of London's most intriguing residents to learn a little bit more about who they are. One on One, Mondays at 6.30 on Rogers TV. Hello, I'm Liz Dowdswell, Lieutenant Governor of Ontario. In 2008, carbon monoxide, a deadly invisible gas, killed an entire family in our province. That tragedy led to a new law requiring homes with potential CO sources to have alarms. John Gignac's family members passed away that day 
and he shares his story to save others. Please make sure you have working seal alarms in your home. Protect your family today. This is Rogers TV, London. leftover dogs they send them to an auction to be sold off to the first bidder and that's where oreo ended up dog number letters coming to heat now take her home breeder german oreo was lucky though and was rescued and raised by a service dog trainer after bringing oreo home the trainer discovered oreo's wonderful temperament and desire to work and decided to call me oreo was a hard worker but also a little clown with a happy spirit and a permanent smile on her face she also loves children. In fact, her love of children often distracts her at showtime. But if she can make it that long, there is always a meet and greet at the end of every show. If you could close your eyes and imagine the perfect family pet, it would be Oreo. She looks as though she walked right out of a Disney movie and she is the kid's favorite in the show. Oreo has a variety of different tricks. She is a skilled basketball player who can hand the ball over like a human, catch the ball, and slam dunk. This talented little dog can also weave through legs, play dead. Bang. I want to expand Oreo's resume, so we're heading to the Centerfield Sports Complex to do some extensive training. Hi, Shane. I'm Melissa. Nice Hello, to meet Melissa. you. Hello, Melissa. Nice to meet you. This is Oreo. Hello, Oreo. Oreo, Sheltie, Corgi, uh, athlete extraordinaire. Hi. So, um, we are here at the Centerfield Sports Complex. Can you tell me about yourself and what you do here and your history? Yeah, um, I was fortunate enough to play in the Jays organization for a couple of years. Awesome. Um, was in the minor leagues there and then I was fortunate enough to start working here. Um, so we provide lessons, clinics, leagues for uh, anybody three and up. I hear Oreos three, is that right? <laughs> yeah, she is three, so she just okay. made it. Uh, she's just of age. Um, Oreo is a basketball player and she would love to learn some things about baseball, so I have a unique client here for you today. Is there anything you can think of that we can work on for Oreo? Yeah, that's perfect. We've actually had a lot of newcomers to baseball because the Blue Jays are doing so well recently. <laughs> They're converting over to baseball. Um, so can she catch? Oh yeah, she can yeah. catch, um, but I can't throw, so I need some help there. Okay, I think I can handle that. Yeah. How about running? Pretty good runner? Oh yeah, she okay. can run short legs. Don't let those fool you. All right, so we'll do catching. Yeah. running and sliding into home and see what else we've got. Yeah, perfect. All right, Oreo, are you ready? Okay, my favorite trick for this dog is to catch the ball in a sit pretty. Okay. Problem is my throws are not as quality as they could be, so I only she only catches one out of every three or one out of every five. Yeah. So I want to challenge you and see if you can out-train me. I want to see if you I can probably do that. You bro, oh, he's yeah. confident already. He's like, yeah, I yeah, can yeah. probably do that. I can do that. Uh, so we'll each get three and we'll see who catches it the most. Yeah, for sure. Right. Wait. Because it's a good the start for you. I'm going to be able to do it. I'm going to get in the zone here. Oh, no. too One for two. Oh, too I like low. my chances here. <laughs> so the number one is to how to get the sit pretty. One. Yeah, you one. So she's in it, so you can, whenever you're ready, let's here see. Here we go. Oh. Yes! Maybe she's on my team and she knows. Here we go. Catch. Oh, man. Oh, that one was low. I thought you were a pro. Uh, I, I don't usually throw like this. It's usually <laughs> overhand in baseball. Pretty. Catch it. That's not on me. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe that yes. was too hard. High five. You don't know that trick. <laughs> uh, am I here to take tips from you? Because I don't know. That wasn't... Oh, I see it how it is. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah. I, you know what? I think we could do some trades. You could give me tips on how to throw it yeah. better, and then I'll yeah. give you better training tips. Okay. You can work on the dog. Yeah. <laughs> okay, perfect. Four seam grip is the most important part. What does that mean? So you got to go across the horseshoe here to make the ball rotate straight. Okay. And that'll make you more accurate like in your this? throws. Do you think yeah. I should go overhand or underhand? Based on the height here, I would say underhand's probably best. Okay. And then should I practice like hitting a spot on the wall 
to uh, aim better for her because I aim to that little white spot between her cheeks. Yeah. And I throw like this. Should I throw like this? Yeah, outside your leg outside might work a little better. bit better. There yeah. you go. <laughs> for the dog, um, she just doesn't know to look to you. So if you get close and you tell her, yeah. hold it, hold, and then take it, hold, and then move back to the throw. Okay, let's try that. Okay. Sit pretty, hold. Hold. All right, let's try this. Back. There we go. Finally. Do you see yeah. the potential that I see? Yeah, for sure. She's got quick paws, so that's that's <laughs> yeah. important in being able to catch. You might want to get a custom glove for her. True. That would definitely help the catch. What about the length of her arms? Do you think that would inhibit her abilities to uh, play? No, because that can help her speed. True. So. Where do you think Oreo's strengths are? I think based on her size, she's probably going to be a singles hitter, uh, move some runners over, so she's going to have to learn how to run the bases and use her speed. Okay. All right. Ready, Oreo? Are you ready to run the bases? Ready? Go, run. Go. That's pretty good. All right. She's yeah, not supposed perfect. to go back this way, though, right? Hey, get you over there. Go, Mark. <laughs> Mark, go. Stay. That's pretty good. Yeah? Yeah. The only improvement I would see is if she could follow the white line all the way down. Uh, that would eliminate most of the distance and she'd be flying every time. Perfect. Um, so once she's at first, uh, we're going to utilize her speed by stealing second base. Oh, okay. So she's going to learn how to slide next. Perfect. All right, Oreo has a variation on the slide, so hopefully she performs this sliding into second. Okay, see. perfect. So what do you think? Ideally, you would like to see her start sliding before the base, <laughs> yes. but there's always room for improvement on that. Perfect. And I yeah. feel like with her height, she could slide right under their... Avoid all the tags. Perfect. All right. How do we turn this dog into a well-rounded ball player? Well, we've clearly seen her speed on the bases and in the sliding, so we're going to need her to play the outfield a little bit. Uh, most of the outfielders, that's where they use their speed because they need to track down the ball, so we're going to see if she can go track down a ball. All right. All right. Let's see how she does in the outfield. Then. All right. You're going to get we go. it? Get it! Come! Yeah! Yay! Yay. Good job! Alright, so uh, thanks for being her coach today. How'd she You're do? You're welcome. Pretty well. For the first uh, session, she did very well. Um, there's some more things that we could show her down the road, but for now, that's perfect. Lots of stamina. Yeah, again, great speed. It's knowing your strengths and hiding your weaknesses. Good. So what, uh, you do a lot of coaching like this. Well, not like this, but yeah. to humans. Yeah, yeah. We offer uh, private lessons all year round. Uh, we have leagues in the winter. We have summer camps. Uh, so when the kids are out of school, they can come for the week um, throughout the summer. And we do all baseball skills. Um, all our coaches are uh, former professional baseball players or collegiate baseball players, so there's a lot of experience here. All right, that was a lot of hard work today. Oreo's thirsty, so we'll all uh, grab ourselves a drink. Are you ready? 